It was the attack that was supposed to have turned the tide back in favour of the Germans, the Ardennes Offensive. Mustering a large proportion of Germany's remaining armoured assets, the massive German attack struck a thinly defended sector of Belgium and Luxembourg called the Ardennes, opening on the 16th of December 1944. Advancing through fog and rain, the Germans encountered stiffer than expected resistance from outnumbered and often surrounded American units, slowing Hitler's carefully laid timetable. Pressing on, the German failure to capture some important crossroads settlements, primarily Bastogne, meant that the dream of reaching the Meuse River and striking onto Antwerp to cut the US and British armies in two and cut off their supplies was doomed to failure though several weeks of hard fighting followed before the Allies crushed the German salient, known as the Battle of the Bulge. Today, three German Panther tanks remain on display close to where they were knocked out or abandoned during the offensive. Incredibly valuable relics in various states of preservation and testament today to the terrible events, the winter of 1944-45, that devastated many local communities. On the 18th of December 1944, the Armoured Regiment of the 116th Panzer Division was advancing towards the important road junction of Bertoin via the small town of Hoefelis. Hoefelis fell without problems, but at Bertoin, the 116th Panzer was stopped by a blown bridge over the river Urth. The Panzer Regiment was forced to double back from Hoefelis on the 19th of December, but during this movement they found themselves under the deadly aerial assault of US P-38 Lightning fighter bombers. One Panther, number 111, was blown off the bridge into the river, killing its crew. The Germans moved on, but Panzer 111 remained upside down in the river until the 20th of September 1947 when French recovery vehicles righted the tank and dragged it to the bank. The remains of the crew were removed. Two other Panthers were also knocked out during the fierce US air attacks that left Hoefelis a ruin. These two were towed away and scrapped after the war. There only remained Panther 111. For many years, the Panther was left on the riverbank as a wreck. Some years later, it was set up as a war memorial on a concrete plinth in the town, repainted and carrying the erroneous turret number 401. But time, weather and vandals were not kind. Recently, the Panther was taken to the Bastogne barracks for a complete makeover by the Belgian army. Due to be returned to its plinth in 2019 or 20, the pandemic has delayed this move, but hopefully it will soon return. The battle for the town of Grand Menil took place over Christmas 1944. Elements of the US 75th Infantry and 3rd Armoured Divisions faced off against the advancing armoured regiment, the 2nd SS Panzer Division Das Reich. The fighting was fierce and the village was badly damaged. Afterwards, the retreating Germans left behind many armoured vehicles, including an intact panther in a meadow. This tank had run out of fuel and had been abandoned without first being destroyed. Post-war, this panther was one of three or four dragged out of fields by the Belgian army. The panther was kept as a monument, while the others were scrapped. Today, the panther serves as a war monument and is sat on a roundabout in the village on the N807 between Autant and Vielsaam. On the hull below the machine gun, you can see the insignia of the 2nd SS Panzer Division. Unfortunately, it's been pilfered by souvenir hunters and vandals down the decades. Inside, the seats, the interior switches, the ammunition bins, they've all been removed, but the gearbox is still there as well as the engine. On the side of the turret is painted the designation 407. The 4 equals the 4th company, the 0, the staff platoon, and the 7th, the 7th vehicle in that platoon. The sheet metal exhaust screens and the rear turret door have also been taken. And it's also missing its muzzle brake at the end of the gun barrel. Close to the Panther is an excellent Battle of the Bulge museum. Some of the severest fighting in the Battle of the Bulge was around the important crossroads town of Bastogne. 
the 21st of December 1944, the Panzerlehr Battle Group pulled out of the fight for Bastogne and regrouped with the 2nd Panzer and 116th Panzer Divisions for an assault on Dinant to secure a crossing of the Meuse, the initial objective of Hitler's offensive. They managed to fight their way through the town of Saint-Hubert, and the road to Dinant looked open. On the 23rd of December, Rochefort was taken. Then, on Christmas Eve, the Panther Column approached the road junction, the N510 and the N48. A local story goes that the Germans halted and asked a local café owner at the Pavillon des Ardennes if the road to Dinant was open and whether vehicles had been using it recently. Marthe Morique, the owner, lied. She told the Germans that it was mined. The officer commanding the Panther Column decided to cut cross-country, and this was where the Panther tank, now residing in Cell, came to grief. The Panther ran over a powerful anti-tank mine in a field near Chateau Acteur. The Panther in the village today had been flipped over onto its turret beside the road to Neuf Chateau. The Panther belonged to a battle group of the 2nd Panzer Division, which was eventually surrounded. The commander, Major von Korkenhausen, and 600 men abandoning all their vehicles and walking out. In the months and years after the war, attempts were made to right the tank, but failed, and then its hatches, road wheels, and tracks were taken for scrap. The US Army also tested anti-tank weapons against it, here we see a post-war photograph of the Panther after it was righted outside the chateau. Eventually in 1948, the café owner, Madame Monrique, bought the tank and had it set up beside her café as a monument. Appropriately, her café has been renamed Le Tank. The Panther remains in remarkably good condition, though a little legless. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share. Also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.